I was on a trajectory to have quite a nice white collar income, um, of which I, I quit way before even getting to the precipice of, of, of achieving it, unfortunately, but that's fine. Um, I chose passion. I moved and set up Seven Clean Seas. It was fulfilling two of my favorite things, which was something I was passionate about, the environment, and also the entrepreneurial kind of energy and excitement of building something from scratch. Um, it was and is the world's biggest slog. I think any entrepreneur can agree with that. I think environmental environmental businesses are no different. People like to think they are, and I think the reality is it's 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 tough. Um, there are long hours. There's high stress. There's ups. There's downs. Um, ultimately, it's all worth it when you see the impact that you're generating, and it's a tangible impact. Um, I would say that anybody can move into sustainability um it can be either retraining and joining a company within sustainability you know the market is 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 desperate for sustainability professionals everyone every company in the world seems to be looking for a sustainability team it's a, a relatively new thing in the last kind of five years and there's not very many people with more than four or five years experience in the market so um it's a very conducive market to switch and it probably will remain that way for for another half decade or so um, if not longer. Um, so that's one way of doing it. The second is to you know start your own business, which uh, is not for the faint hearted. Um, if you enjoy your life and uh, and your social life and not being stressed and sleeping in, then it's probably not not the best move. It's not as glamorized as it is on TikTok and 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 Instagram um, in real life. Um, and then the third one, which is actually the biggest one that I, I want to really drill home here is actually you don't need to move jobs. You know, so many of the people, that we have interacted with in in uh, in companies that have made us, you know, brought us in, brought us to the C-level execs, and helped us become partners, um, have actually just been people who have a regular job within the business and have identified a need for a sustainability function within that same business, and they've really focused on making themselves like the center of the sustainability world and doing it on the side of their regular job. And in a few instances, quite a few instances, it gets to a point where the company actually asks the individual whether they want to make a transition into a full-time sustainability role and, and step away from their other responsibilities. So I've seen that quite a lot. And I, I think if you're in a big company with a lot of opportunity in sustainability, that is one of the, the highest impact ways to do it, the lowest barrier to entry and, and, and potentially less stressful way of doing it as well. I think three bits of very good advice. Um, <laughs> yeah, and especially the one about, you know, starting on your own is not for the faint hearted. Uh, yeah. And that, you know, arguably that's, that goes for, you know, starting something within an organization as well. You know, the kind of entrepreneur, um, you know, is still very, yeah. very challenging uh, and will take time. So I think it's got to be something you're passionate about. I think that's really, really, really important thing to take away. Um, I guess, you know, if I'm thinking about it from my side, there's probably not a huge amount to build on from what you said there. I think you kind of covered, um, and you know, certainly from you, your first-hand experience, I think you've kind of got the best the best experience of it. If we look at, you know, if I talk about it from a our business perspective, and if I talk about it maybe from a energy rather than a sustainability angle, I think that um, the reality is is that um, you know, if you look at sustainability, it's a really in-demand job with with limited skills actually and knowledge. So I think those people are in demand, and actually you're seeing them generate a premium so it you know it's 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 a really good um skill set to think about training in and developing in and growing into because it you know it really offers you a very lucrative or very um, attractive career and a long-term career and exactly to say something you, you could be uh, passionate about if i look at the energy world you know as a, our business was if you go back seven years was 85 80 percent oil and gas was the work that we were doing working with clients you know on it on, on oil and gas projects it's now 10 percent of, of our organization um right. it's also um well i, I say 10 percent, about 12 percent, but we'll call it 10 percent. it's close enough and most of that actually is working with those clients on on their transition as well you know a lot of those businesses are thinking about what they can do in the in the long term rather than the the short term um and th there's work to be done on that um but absolutely there is a um, opportunity to build a long-term career. And I think if you're prepared to maybe look at a, if, you, if you're say in the oil and gas sector and you wanna look at the renewable sector, or if you're in a, 
uh, finance role and you want to look at sustainability, I think it is absolutely something that's achievable. You've got to consider how do I train, how do I develop my skills to make myself attractive, but also can I be realistic about take, maybe taking a step back to go forwards, going into that new role or going into that new industry. But um, absolutely, there is a huge appetite and a huge amount of career growth and opportunity in those sectors. So I think people should uh, consider them.